Okay, hi, my name's Angela Dunn. I'm the LPC here on the TSTC campus. Today I've come to uh, present to you a stress relief workshop. Um, I heard that you're gonna be taking some tests um, pretty soon, so I'm hoping that this is gonna be uh, beneficial to you. Okay, so what is stress? Stress is defined as an organism's response, right, to environmental demands or pressures. And this includes your response in lieu of what's going on with your body, your emotions, your thoughts, things like that, okay? All right, good stress versus bad stress. And you're thinking, okay, hold on, how is stress good? Sometimes stress can be good. It's a motivational stress. So that stress uh, to get an assignment done, right? I have a 10-page paper. I'm halfway through. It's due tomorrow. That's good stress. It motivates you. I have 10 pounds to lose. I have two months to do it. It's stress. It's, you know, a motivational one. You're going to get to do it. It's going to push you to do it, right? Then you have bad stress. Bad stress is usually the kind of stress that you have when you want to change something, but you have no control over it. Sometimes we have irrational anxiety, or sometimes we have self-defeating anxiety. You go into a test, you're like, I know I'm going to fail, I know I'm going to fail. Well, you don't have a crystal ball. Nobody walks around with one, right? So we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So that's bad stress, <coughs> okay? Negative effects of stress, like the little cartoon. I think it's stress, and the little, poor little zebras, you know, stripes are falling off of him. Oops. Okay, our bodies react to stress in different ways. Um, sometimes we have a shortage of oxygen. When we have a shortage of oxygen, you know, we might have more shallow breathing. Um, and then because we're having less oxygen, blood's flowing less, and so we have coldness in our extremities because it's not reaching your hands or your feet, things like that. Everybody reacts to stress in very different ways. Some people have trouble concentrating. Other people have trouble remembering things. Because when you're focusing so much energy on just staying calm, staying calm, you're missing everything else around you, right? Also, people can have fatigue, right? Some people lose their hair. Um, it'll start falling out because they're just so stressed out. It's, you know, overwhelming to them, so. Headaches, uh, digestive trouble, you know, uh, some people have diarrhea or constipation. It just messes with your digestive tract a lot. Problem sleeping, you either can't sleep or you're so fatigued that you're sleeping way too much. Um, can run into racing thoughts, you're laying in bed at night, you're having trouble getting to sleep because you're having all those thoughts. I need to do this tomorrow, I need to do that. You know, I know I'm not going to do this well. Am I going to pass this? Um, I need to, you know, take care of this. Whatever it is, it could be family problems or <coughs> school problems, work, that kind of thing. And because, you know, you're stressed out, it's going to drop your immunity. People who have a lot of stress open themselves up. They're more vulnerable to catching colds, to picking up germs around them because your body's so focused over here that it's not, um, you know, um, focusing, I guess, on protecting your immunity or your health. All right. And then we have the bio dots. Okay. Inside each of your little baggies, you have a bio dot. And the bio dots have this little black, you'll see square on the end, right? If each of you will just, you know, put your finger and, or your thumb over it like this and hold it for about 10 seconds. One, 1,002, 1, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010. Okay, so what color? Mine turned like a greenish color. So it means I might be a little tense, which makes sense because I'm presenting, right? Ooh, okay, green tense. Yours is black. Well, I don't, is it working? <laughs> <laughs> if it's black, then you're really stressed out, right? <laughs> right? Oh my God. So. How's it going? 
good. Did anyone get like just super relaxed? It's all purple. It's all good. No, nobody's really relaxed. You're thinking of that quiz later. Anybody get black? You're like super stressed out. Oh. Yes. Well, that's the thing. Right, and that's the thing. It'll test, but also when you're anxious, again, your extremities aren't normally cold. It could be the room itself. Um, so, you know, if you're in a temperate environment, if you want to pull this out and say, okay, am I really stressed? Because sometimes we don't realize we're stressed until we have all those negative effects on the other page. Well, why is my hair falling out? Well, hello, you're working a full-time job. You're working, you know, going to school full-time you're probably a little stressed out, right? So sometimes it's hard to notice. And on the back, it kind of just gives some information um, about the temperature and stuff like that. So it's something you can kind of carry around with you just to kind of check it out whenever. Okay, so now we're gonna kind of move on. I wanna try to give you some coping skills today. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a demonstration on a stress ball on how to make one, and then you're going to get to make your own. Okay, so a stress ball, we've all seen them, right? Sometimes we find these little squishy balls. This is what they call an isoflex stress ball. You can use it to kind of massage your hand, okay? So what's going to go inside is either, it's about a fourth of a cup. It's just a smidge over a fourth of a cup. You can put sand or you can put flour. For the purposes of today, and to fit it through this little funnel, <laughs> I've chosen flour to go inside of it, okay? So, what you're gonna do is insert your funnel, right? And you're just gonna kind of fill it up with some sand. You're not gonna wanna fill it up completely full. We're not trying to make a huge balloon with um, sand inside of it, right? because you're going to want a little additional room in there so you're able to move around the sand and it's a little, make it a little bit more malleable, I guess. Um, you can pretty much use any type of sand or flour. I, ref I would recommend reframing from using the beach sand only because it's usually wet and it packs, so it's really hard. Um. And the only reason I use funnels is just it's easier to get it in there and it's a little less messy. That's also why I like sand because you know flour kind of goes everywhere. However, flour is a little bit more therapeutic for your hands. Okay. This can be used when you're having a lot of anxiety and so, um, you know, it's a good form of distraction, but it also works kind of like that acupressure. It's going to work some of those points for you. So it's kind of relaxing. Kind of a fun activity to do, um, and it'll cost very little money because you can use what's in your kitchen, right? So not too bad. Alrighty. So I've got most of my sand in there. I'd recommend using a regular size balloon, not like a little water balloon, because then it's not gonna be as therapeutic for you. And you can just tie the top, right? And then you just kind of roll it around in your hand, kind of molds to your hand. It's kind of a therapeutic kind of thing. Okay, so other ways to reduce your stress. These are just coping skills. I want to stress that they don't work for everybody. You have to find your own kind of unique ways um, and what works for you because everybody's an individual, so it has to be unique for you, right? So we have laughing. You know, I of teach my clients sometimes you just have to laugh at your problems you you know you're so stressed out you don't want to cry so laugh it'll be a good release for you and get those endorphins going and you know 
It may not be that your problems are funny, but you could just be at that point where what else can I do, really? Okay. Hanging out with your friends, you know, getting social. It could be your classmates, going out, you know, I don't have much time. Let's go get a Coke and not talk about class for a little while and just talk about random stuff, right? Learning to control your anger, that's another one, because when we get stressed out, sometimes we just are irritable. We have no more energy to deal with anybody, right? And so people around us start becoming, you know, annoying to us, things like that. So kind of learning how to control your temper is a good thing. Creating healthy boundaries. A lot of people have trouble saying no. You know, it's okay to tell somebody no. I don't want to do that. Somebody asks you for a favor, don't feel obligated. You know, if you don't have the time, you don't have the resources, say, you know, look, I'm sorry, I just don't have time for that right now. Um, sleep. You know, not everybody needs eight hours of sleep. That's a myth. But you do need the amount that works best for you. So if you're running on five hours and that's okay for you, then do five hours. I'm a little concerned if you're sleeping more than 12 hours a day or less than three hours. Okay? You really should be getting somewhere in between those. Um, finding a hobby. Just something to do. You want to make stress balls all day and that's your hobby? Awesome, right? Um, some people knit. Some people make model cars. Um, maybe you want to start flying kites again. You know, whatever kind of relieves your stress, go for it. Be good to yourself. Take care of yourself. You can't expect anybody else to take care of you. And honestly, you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of anybody else, right? So don't feel like it's selfish if you're going to take a little, you know, 30-minute break and just, you know, do something that you like. Read a comic, watch a cartoon, um, go get your nails done, whatever. Um, establish routines. It'll cut down, you know, on time wasted here and there, and you get everything done. And I can't stress enough, you know, if you need to go and write down a schedule, because I have people coming, I have no time. I have no free time. Let's write out a schedule. We'll see where we can block you in some free time. Sounds bad to say, hey, I need to block in some free time for myself, but sometimes you have to, especially if you're working a lot and if you're going to school a lot and you have limited time and some people have families. So playing around, going to the gym, getting some exercise, increasing those endorphins, all those good feel, eating right. Sometimes a tip-off for stress is when we go for the junk food. Mm-hmm. Tastes good, right? We have chocolate. It's boosting those serotonin levels in your brain. And you know it's like you're binging out on stuff. I'm so uh, stressed. We gain those 20 pounds before the end of the semester. Yeah. So eating better, treating your body better. And learning maybe a relaxation exercise, breathing exercises, or take yoga. You know, all those are good. Or just go for a simple walk, right? Um, baking or grabbing a coloring book. They have some that have really intricate patterns that are just for adults or not for kids. Kind of mosaic sort of patterns, things like that, that you can get. Okay, college and stress, right? College students have different stresses. Time management, financial, you're trying to pay for your classes, and you know, you're having to buy books, and then, hey, I can't work as much because I'm having to pay for classes and go to school and things like that. Transitioning, test. Okay, so here's a checklist. You might have test anxiety if you have those thoughts before a test, I'm gonna fail, right? Um, if you didn't sleep well the night before, because you're tossing, you're turning, you're thinking about the test, did I study enough, things like that. Um, maybe if you're sweating or even having stomach kind of problems during, before, or after the test, you know, it's a sign of anxiety. Um, you go, you sit down for the test, and your mind goes blank. It happens, and it's anxiety. Take a breath. It'll come to you. Becoming very nervous as the time runs out. Don't focus on the clock, just focus on the test, right? Answer whatever questions are easiest for you first. The ones that are harder, go back. And always go with your first instinct. 
Don't go back and change the answer two, three times. Don't overthink it. Your first instincts usually spot on. Okay, and what is test anxiety? Just that uneasiness that we get, that uh, uncomfortable kind of feeling that you get, the shortness of breath. Some people have chest pain up here, like uh, almost a feeling of suffocation sometimes, right? Except that you may not know all the answers, and that's okay. You know, it's okay if you don't get 100, right? As long as you get enough to pass your test. Because there's always going to be that one tricky question that you're like, but don't beat yourself up after. I've done it. I'm sure we have all done it. I should have known that answer. I should have known it. You can't go back and change things. Just move forward, right? Okay, so some tips to reduce that. Keep a positive attitude. Think positively. You know what? I'm going to pass this test, right? Uh, take one question at a time. Don't compare yourself. Somebody leaves the room first. Oh my gosh, you know, well, hey, you don't know, maybe they just put down whatever and they left. You go at your own pace. Um, take deep breaths, drink water, you know, take a mint. If you're allowed to have chewing gum, it actually, research has shown that it'll increase your ability to concentrate. Okay? Uh, use earplugs. You can get those really um, cheap earplugs at the store. They're foam, you roll them, they put in, and they expand, right? And believe me, they do cut the sound. Um, and then, you know, stop cramming at least 30 minutes before the test. Because anything after that, guarantee you're not going to remember because your mind's all woo. And so, you know, it'll give you some time to relax and breathe and go in to the test a little bit more relaxed. Okay, you're having negative thoughts in your mind. Don't yell it out loud because you're in a test, right? <laughs> but in your mind, just say stop, right? Because it's going to clear that. And visualize yourself in a calming place. You start to get anxious, take yourself to the beach in your head, right? Or to the woods or to whatever place you find peaceful. Um, remind yourself, you know, I'm going to get through this. I really am. And, you know, identify areas the week before the test that you find difficult. A lot of people come in saying, I don't understand anything. And by the time they leave the office, okay, I do understand, the, you know, some things. I just don't understand this, and I don't understand this. And then focus on those two areas, or three areas, whatever areas that you have. And then just breathe. Just breathe. Calm and then go in and take it. All right, any questions? No? Okay, I'm so happy I could come today. I hope you enjoy your stress balls. Use them well. And remember to breathe, relax, and have positive thinking.